Good morning, hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I have some bad news and some good news for you today. Let me start with the bad news. I had a lot of plans for this year related uh, to my traveling. I planned uh, several uh, long trips for this year. Unfortunately, the life have different plans for me this year. Due to various personal problems, I had to give up uh, some of my trips. For this reason I cannot uh, leave uh, for a longer period because I have to be available here on the spot. And that basically means that I'm grounded. But of course that doesn't mean that I won't be traveling at all. And that is the good news. I will definitely uh, be doing some weekend trips, one day trips and of course I will take you with me. It's a holiday in the Netherlands uh, right now and I have two days off. And today I will begin my uh, one day trip and we will explore Netherlands together today. So in this episode I will tell you everything uh, I know about a famous Netherlands uh, Delta Works. And of course I will show you as much as, as I can, as much as possible. But what is Delta Works and why it was built? Well the Delta Works is Netherlands largest float defense system. Three locks, six dams and four storm surge barriers together form the Delta Works. A large part of the Netherlands lies below the sea level which makes vulnerable to the floats. Today I will go to the south of the Netherlands to the province of Zeeland where the large part uh, of the Delta Works is located but to give you an idea how far below the sea level Netherlands is, I will go the opposite direction at first, northeast, where the lowest point in the Netherlands is. So let's go there, guys. And on the way. I'm going to tell you more about the history of the Delta Works. A large part of the Netherlands is below sea level and many large European rivers flow to the country to the sea. The large volume of water and the low-lying situation of the country exposes the Netherlands to the threat of flooding. Float protection is therefore vital for safety of millions of people in the Netherlands. Delta Works began to be built in 1954, about a year after the most tragic event in the history of the Netherlands. The float of 1953, also called the Great Float, was the greatest natural disaster to occur in the Netherlands in the 20th century. The combination of a heavy northwesterly storm and a spring tide caused flooding in the large parts of the country. The disaster claimed the lives of 1836 people. Ten thousands of animals and many homes were destroyed. Apart from a combination of weather events, the poor condition of the dikes also contributed to this tragedy. And that's how it all started. Almost a third of the Nederland is situated below the sea level. The Netherlands literally means lowlands. Behind me there is a A20 motorway which goes from Gouda to Rotterdam. The lowest point below the sea level can be found here in the new Kerk on the IJssel. And what you see here is the lowest point in the Netherlands monument. And right there on the bottom of this monument is a number minus 6.74 NAP. 
which means that we are right now 6 meters 74 centimeters below sea level. So you can imagine that the location of this country is uh, conducive to flooding from the North Sea and that's why uh, Delta Works was born. Now we will go uh, along the beautiful dike roads to Krimpen on the IJssel where the Hollandse IJssel storm surge barrier is located. So let's go! I hope guys you don't mind that I'm going to help myself with a piece of paper because there is a lot of information and I'm just old, I can't remember anything. So, behind me, Hollandse ISO storm surge barrier. It was the first barrier built as part of the Delta Works. Uh, construction began in 1954 and on May 6 of 1958 the first sluice gate was lowered as a test with the storm surge barrier made operational on 22nd of October 1958. The barrier gates, so that green stuff, are 80, me are 80 meters in width and 135 meters apart. Uh, the total weight of each gate is 480 tons. That is a monster. Well, our next destination, Hartel Barrier. So, Let's go. Okay, people, let's go to the next destination. I just want to show you there is actually two gates. So this is the second gate and the bridge uh, between them. That's a very weird way to ride, but okay. Now Holland and Eisel, that's the river. Oh, this road is terrible here. And gate on the left, the barrier. And on the right, there is another barrier.
and here we have Hartel Barrier. I will try to find some uh, nice spot to see it. Well, it took me a while, but I found better spots. Behind me, Hartel Barrier. The Hartel Barrier, in Dutch, Hartel Kering. It is a storm surge barrier in Spikenese in Netherlands. The barrier is part of the Europort Kidding, itself part of the Delta Works project and is designed to close the Hartel Canal in case of a storm surge. The barrier consists of two vertical lift gates 49.3 meters and 98 meters in length. The gates have a height of 3 meters above NAP when they closed. The water level at this location can become higher, but in order to prevent flooding of the Europort area, the gates were designed to allow the water to overtop the gates in extreme situations. The amount of water would be too small to cause any problems in the protected area, but it does limit the surge level in the unprotected areas. In the right position the bottom of the gates is at 14 meters above NAP, slightly higher than the Hartel bridge next to the barrier. The barrier is equipped with a construction to fend off floating debris, which could damage the gates. The Hartel barrier was constructed from 1991 to 1998, at the same time as a Marsland barrier, which I'm gonna show you a little bit later. On 8 November 2007, a storm from the northwest hit the Dutch coast. A storm surge high enough to start the barrier's closing procedure occurred. The barrier was closed due to a storm surge for the first time since its construction. That was the Hartelkering or Hartel barrier. And now we are going to the next destination, which is a small town of Rosenburg. Where is the next barrier? See you there. destination. What you see over there is Hoek van Holland. It's a small town on the coast and that's exactly where the entrance to the Europort is. It's there you can see as well the uh, ferries. These ferries from Stenderlijn they're going to England. And on the other side is our next barrier which is called Masland Barrier or Masland Kering. And I would love to show you this from a bird's eye view, but unfortunately I can't fly my drone here. It's a no-fly zone and there is a few reasons for that. First of all, there is a power grid, so power lines. Second of all, we have here, these windmills, these massive windmills, and uh, because it's a waterway, I cannot fly above the waterway. And another issue is 
we have here these lovely birds, which means a nature, and I'm not allowed to disturb a nature, but they're very lovely. Look at that, how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, thirty-four birds. Wow! They like it here. And uh, the last problem is there is very strong wind in here, so uh, no flying in this area. But let me tell you something about the Masland Kering. The Masland Barrier is located in the Nieuwe Waterweg near Hoek van Holland and was built between 1991 and 1997. The structure is operated entirely automatically and together with the Hartel Barrier and the expanded Rosenburg Dyke forms the Europort Barrier. The Masland Barrier is a forward flood surge barrier, which means that it receives the full brunt of flooding from the sea and so protects the residents of the province of South Holland. The Masland Barrier has two doors, each 210 meters wide, 22 meters high and 15 meters deep. When the barrier closes, they fill with water and sink to the bottom within two hours. The Masland Barrier operates with the ball and socket joints, each of which is 10 meters in diameter and weighs 680 tons. So that was a Masland Kering or Masland Barrier. I'm just gonna go uh, to the end of this road. There is a very nice parking. And you can see the windmills are working on. And it's incredibly windy here. coffee so a short break and then I'll be going to our next destination I have about 20 kilometers to that place <music> on my next destination and my next destination is Herringfleet Dam. It's a dam with the slouses and it's there. The problem is it's not very visible. The problem is I can't really find a nice spot where the dam would be visible and I cannot fly my drone because it is crazy windy. Look at the windmills. They are going absolutely crazy. So what I'm gonna do now will go to the uh, other side of the road. Maybe I can find a nice spot over there. Actually it is quite late, it's almost two o'clock. And I didn't have my lunch yet, so uh, I'm gonna go there to the other side of the water. There is a very nice small restaurant 
a bar actually where they serve uh, very good fish and chips. Definitely not hungry anymore. It was very tasty fish and chips in Eight Cafe de Stelle. My belly is full, so we can go. So, this is a hiring fleet, them. And uh, let's go see what's on the other side. It's a little bit sp steep and the small stones. The gravel, I hope I won't. Oh, that's windy here. Okay. The Herring Fleet Dam incorporating the Herring Fleet sluices are hydraulic engineering structures which close off the estuary of the Haringsfleet Netherlands as part of the Delta Works. The structure consists of 17 sluices, several kilometers of dam and a shipping lock and form the sixth project of the Delta Works. The northernmost of Delta Works it was supposed to be finished by 1968 as the first part of the project. Building started in 1957 and was finished in 1971. Instead of damming the estuary, it was decided to build sluices in order to be able to let in salt water to prevent freezing of the rivers Meuse and Rhine and to drain these rivers in case of flood. The height of the dam crest is 18.5 meter above NAP and 17.3 meters above the water level in the Haring's fleet. The width between piers is 56.5 meters and the depth of the still of the gates was partly determined by the need for icebreakers to pass through them at low tide, being fixed at 5.5 meters below NAP. Leaving Harit Fleet Dam, I go south about 40 kilometers where there is another similar barrier called the Eastern Scheldt Storm Surge Barrier. The Ofstelscheldt Kering, or in English Eastern Scheldt Storm Surge Barrier, between the islands Schouden-Houwenland and noord beveland is the largest of the Delta Works. A series of dams and storm surge barriers designed to protect the Netherlands from flooding from the North Sea. The Oosterschelt Kering was the most difficult to build and most expensive part of the Delta Works. Work on the dam took more than a decade. Construction started in April 1976 and was completed in June 1986. The road over the dam was ready for use in November 1987. Unfortunately, my day was slowly coming to an end. I was very tired and I was still two hours away from my home. It was time to end this tour of Delta Works right here. Well guys, um it is time to end this video. I hope this video was interesting and uh, educational. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't subscribe my channel yet, 
please do it makes a big difference for me uh, thanks for watching and of course see you in the next one cheers guys